Listen, smoking can be fun and all, but anyone who's done it consistently knows that it can get stale. If you think about it, it probably makes sense scientifically. After you feel the same stimulus, you'll eventually grow jaded to it. But people who don't smoke almost always take the high experience in entirely new ways. So I decided to get a group of friends together that have never smoked to test this hypothesis. I don't have a lot of friends though, so it was only two people, so please don't comment on that. But my lucky individuals were the legend camera and my friend Jaime. Jaime showed up to my house first and completely unannounced to me, he came in full Joker face paint. When I saw this, I got the feeling that this night was gonna be really funny or really scary for Cameron. I didn't know how he'd take this once he saw it high. But eventually, young Cameron pulled up and I gave the two of them edibles because they didn't wanna hurt their little lungs. So while we're waiting for these to hit, I really start hyping the whole thing up to these guys. All right, guys, listen, this is gonna actually change your lives. This is gonna, gonna be the best experience that you've ever had. And Jaime was like, hee hee hee, I'm the Joker. And not even 10 minutes after consumption, Cameron swore he could feel it already. That was Cap though. It was all placebo at this point, but he believed it with his whole heart. It didn't help that Jaime started gaslighting him like, yeah, you definitely feel it, man. I think I'm actually starting to feel it too. Holy fuck, I'm so fucking high. So Cameron lays on the bed thinking that he's already high while Jaime just starts getting into my PC. There was very little time before Jaime just opened Steve and bought Honey Pop with my credit card. Trust me, I didn't own this game beforehand. I got a little pissed because bro really thought he was the Joker and intruded into my things, but the game didn't cost that much, so I let it slide. The only thing I hoped for is that once this gummy hit Jaime, this game didn't make him go off and do something the real Joker would never even think of doing. After 30 minutes, these gummies actually started to hit Cameron, and he explained it was like it felt like he was driving a car. Bro was laying on his back with his arms up in the air like, oh my god, guys, I'm going so fast i can't slow down and as soon as he stood up from the bed jaime charged him holding a yoga ball screaming holy fuck there's a car coming and launching cameron back into the bed bro would not let cameron get off the bed every time he tried to get up he just got launched back to where he started i was watching him get bullied before my very eyes but i decided not to intervene so after cameron got launched a few more times he started explaining how the impact of every crash was turning his inside sides into mush. He used the analogy that he felt like an orange that still had the peel intact, but the fruity inside part was smashed. This is when I decided to actually make an intervention and I stole the yoga ball from Jaime. He was getting a little too in character with that Joker face paint. Jaime started throwing a little hissy fit and crying, so he walked away and started playing Honey Pop again. So I took the opportunity to really interview Cameron. So Big Dog, explain to me how you're feeling, Big Dog. And bro started smacking his lips together super loud. This was some audible lip smacking until he explained, hmm, my mouth tastes really good. Like, I feel like I don't have to eat anymore for the rest of my life because my mouth tastes so good. I'm like, damn, that's crazy, big dog. And upon further inspection, the reason that he felt this was because all the impact from that yoga ball made him bite his tongue and he was slightly bleeding. I didn't want to bring attention to all that, so my plan as the professional in this situation was to give him yummy food and hope Hopefully, he wouldn't notice the blood in his mouth. So I'm like, are any of my little boys hungry? And immediately, those two go feral. Those first-time munchies hit hard. So I pull up the classic McDonald's Postmates, and Jaime takes my phone like, let me pick what I want. I'm the joke of chicken baby. Chicken nugget. I want chicken nugget. I'm on it. Let's get some of these chicken nuggets. So Jaime starts spamming the chicken nugget button and orders 50 chicken nuggets to my damn house. As an empathetic individual, I knew the long wait for the Postmates to arrive would be harrowing and brutal for these two. I decided I needed a distraction so they wouldn't complain about it taking too long, mainly Jaime. So I pulled out the iPhone projector and started playing Five Nights at Freddy's Game Theory lore videos because I know Jaime loves those. After not even getting a few minutes into the video, I came to the realization this was actually a terrible mistake because it started to make Jaime genuinely tweet. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 is the worst thing to ever happen to the series. What is blood yapping about? About. I don't know, man. I'm just I'm really hungry. It totally has all the pieces for a dream theory to be true, but no. Is this like an issue? Like, should we stop him? I I don't know if this is bad for. Why is the Chica toy missing its beak? I don't know, man. And what the fuck is Juniors? Why don't people realize FNAF 3 takes place in 2015? 30 years refers to 30 years since the original murders in 1985, not 30 years since the first game.
game. That makes no sense. Luckily, the Postmates notification cut him off and it was chicken nugget time. Let's go. So we ran downstairs, got the food, ran upstairs. But as me and Cameron got to the bedroom, huh? we decided we needed water with the nuggets so that we didn't choke to death. Before we went back downstairs, though, I decided to snap a little picture of the scene in front of me. Because seeing Jaime and Joker face paint playing Honey Pop with 50 chicken McNuggets mm. was something I didn't want to forget. But unknown to us, this would quickly become a top 10 moments caught before disaster image. So we go downstairs, fill up the water in the slow uh, refrigerator faucet and head on up. And in that short amount of time, Jaime had eaten every single one of the 50 chicken nuggets. What the fuck happened to the nuggets, dude? Oh my dude? god, no, why? And he just <laughs> stared and laughed. The worst part is he didn't even eat these nuggets because he was hungry. He ate them because he thought it would be funny if we came back and they were all gone. And considering that he ate 50 nuggets in the period of a few minutes, it didn't take long for Jaime to run to the bathroom throwing up. And honestly, he deserved it at this point. Bro has been acting a fool for hours. He deserves to feel some of the pain he inflicts on others for a change. Immediately after he finished at the toilet, he got right back to playing more Honey Pop as if nothing happened. He had a serious grind to commit to still. Cameron, on the other hand, wasn't feeling all that great after the nugget disaster. Bro was crying his eyes out and bleeding from the mouth like, I'm so hungry, bro. Is there any more food left, bro? Yeah, dude, there is. I just uh, need to go get it from the uh, uh, kitchen. So I gave Cameron... Cameron the iPad with Coco Melon while I went to order more McDonald's. Cameron immediately became demobilized and fell into the Coco Melon trance. But unbeknownst to him, I was about to pull a little debauchery on him because I wasn't about to pay for another McDonald's order. I went downstairs into my kitchen trying to find some good mulch for the boys to eat. I came back with a big bag of Doritos and told the lads that I got the new McDonald's Doritos, my boys. They taste so good. They're way better than the standard ones. And that was enough for him to immediately immediately forget about what Jaime did. I tried to go up to Jaime and ask, so bro, like, how does it feel for you right now? And the only response he would say is, fuck, man, I'm so fucking high, man, holy fuck, to then immediately lock back in and play more Honey Pop. I don't know why he was so locked into this game, dude. Like, he either truly wanted to play this goofy video game all night, or he was just so committed to playing a character that he wouldn't break it for a second. The only eventful moment beyond this was when Cameron dropped the iPad on his face. It seemed that at this point, the night had brought itself to a stalemate. Going back to my hypothesis, the gummies happened to turn Jaime into more of an evil person than he usually is, and it turned Cameron into a toddler. To be honest, I don't think they took it very differently as non-smokers, but also maybe I chose the worst sample group imaginable, I don't know. But anyways, that's the video. Subscribe. Bye! Smoking alone can lead to so many different experiences. Unlike smoking with others, where the dynamic of the group's collective synergy determines the vibe, that vibe is up to you and whatever's going on up in that thick head of yours. In my case, my brain wants to do five different things all at once, and I end up led down strange rabbit holes. Just look at this clip I found once. It's extremely creepy to think about the fact that Mario may be facing a purgatory where he has to face the loss of everyone he failed to protect. Anyways, during my last late night solo session, I decided to track everything I did in my notes app. So here's what I wrote about the journey. Once I began my high, I realized, yo, I bought this projector the other day just for an occasion like this. So I turned it on and sat in my big chair. I did what I do every time and I played Snowfall by One Heart on my Alexa. I had created a nice little setting for myself so I sat back, looked at the ceiling, and existed in it. Then thoughts came over me. I started to have evil thoughts corrupting my mind. The demons were taking over quickly so before they had a chance to overcome me I went on my iPhone SE and opened YouTube. The first video that came up on my recommended was called The Quiet Sadness of Mario Galaxy. And after my demonic ordeal I thought to myself, that's just just like me, I gotta watch this one. But as I clicked on the video, I got an advertisement for Pizza Hut's new melts and instantly forgot about everything else. In this moment, all I wanted was to taste these delicious cheesy new Pizza Hut melts. They looked so unequivocally delicious. All other foods paled in comparison to the melts greatness. So I clicked on the ad, which sent me to a screen that asked me to make a Pizza Hut account to continue. I tried for like 10 minutes to make an account to no avail. 
sale until I saw there was a guest option. But if you're a guest, you still can't order Pizza Hut. God damn it. I can't take this anymore. I'm using Postmates. And then I suddenly got an earth shattering text message from Roman. Bad news, y'all. My parents are getting a divorce and my dad's in jail. Ugh. Oh, oh no. Do not fret. Little did I know this message was a bit of a troll. If I had just looked at the message above it that read, Roman, save my divorce voice recordings, I could have pieced it together, but I didn't. The big dog Cole was running a meme sending Roman voice recordings pretending to be his father, saying he was getting a divorce. But again, I didn't realize this. How did this happen? I need to call him. Bro, explain this to me. Yeah, uh, my parents are getting a divorce. My dad's in jail. Really? Really? Yep, he's in jail, rotting and divorced. Well, he didn't seem too bothered by that. Oh, oh God. Oh, I'm so hungry. I need that Postmates. I had finally ordered the elusive melts. And while waiting for them, I decided to go back and watch that Mario video. I got probably one minute exactly into my viewing until my eyes cheekily shifted down to the first recommended video. Being one of those house building process videos. This don't really hit right now, sheesh. As you can imagine, it didn't think long for my brain brain to start thinking something else. I bet I could build a house. Why don't I just build one right now? I'll play Minecraft and show this guy he could only dream to build a house as good as me. I turn on the PS4 to see the game disc wasn't in and I'd have to get up from my chair to solve this problem. So I just sat there and did nothing. This allowed my demons, corruption and evil sludge to coat my mind once again with its wickedness until pizza time pizza time forgetting the existentialism i instantly ran to the door to acquire the payload it seems it was just a little too fast though because as soon as i opened the door thanks it was finally time the moment we'd all been waiting for all the blood sweat and tears were about to finally pay off in this massive climax of an event this looks so good, holy. I took the first bite of the most heavenly food on the face of the planet. It was exactly what the commercial had promised. This melt was quite literally busting in my mouth with every delicate and cheesy bite I took. I devoured the entire thing in roughly one minute on my beast mode savagery and then threw myself back into the big chair. I was finally determined this time to finish the Mario video. I wasn't a about to let anything stop me. So as I unlocked my phone, I saw it was still on that house making video and I remembered Minecraft was waiting for me. But this time I was changed. After devouring such a great melt, I was feeling formidable and brave enough to get up and put Minecraft into the PS4. I perfectly executed the operation, loaded up a new world, and after 20 something minutes, I made myself the most generic wooden plank house imaginable. Feeling pretty good about this, I opened my phone again, disliked the house building video in an act of ownage and deviosity. Then I got back to my Mario video. Realizing how awesome I was, I felt I couldn't fully relate to the themes of this video as well as 30 minutes ago me would have. But regardless, I watched the whole thing and only paid attention to the visuals and the music since it was all very cute. It was just so nice seeing all of these bright colors and peering into the endless depths of space while listening to the music that by the end of it, I was feeling a tad sleepy. I stumble my way back to my bed and lay down. As I was falling asleep, I felt as though I myself was drifting through space just like the Mario man himself. It was truly so- The Benjamin to a stoner is the equivalent to a peasant's potato farm, meaning it's quite literally the bread and butter of our lives. Because of that, most people end up smoking them for their first time. But for me, this was my second time. I was posted up inside Big Bro Roderick's and incredible house one winter evening. We both felt awesome with very impressive looks on our faces. There were supposedly big plans this evening because Roderick was like, I know these four people having the biggest, most awesome party tonight, which sounded grand, but there was one problem. Do I know these people though? No. Do they know me? Yes. And that was enough for me to be a little bit hesitant. I don't know, man. They could bully me. Don't sweat it, chap. One little dinghy off this port bow and you'll feel on top of the world. Holy crap. That's a, that's a, uh, 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 what's that? What is that? It's we. Boom! 
This was a top 10 bomba clot moment of my entire life. As I mentioned, I had only ever smoked one time before this, and the parasites in my brain were starting to speak to me. The same parasitic voices that tell me to peek corners in Valorant, gamble more money, and generally overextend on things I shouldn't were firing. All right, Roderick, we've done this once before. I don't see the harm in going for a second. <coughs> oh, 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 God, it hurts so badly. You can't go crazy like that, bro. You gotta take your time. Oh, all right. I'll do it gently. <coughs> Are you good, bro? Yeah. All right, my boy. Let's head out and drive to this shindig. As we start to drive, all this time in the car allows me to grasp the gravity of the situation I'm in. The world started to change around me in ways I didn't understand, and I felt an awe-inspiring feeling in my fingertips. I could not act right, and I started to go crazy until immediately locking it. Because I was about to enter a home I didn't know with four people I also don't know. Hey, bro, if they see me like this... What do you think they'll think of me? Oh, I think you're gonna be all good. Oh my god! I had a bad case of the poo-poo eyes from those Benjamin tokes. You look awesome, dude. You'll be okay. Just put on these cool shades and they'll be very impressed with your style. Whoa, I feel like I'm number one, dude. So as we pull up to the house, there's only one single objective on my mind. I need to convince each of these people that I'm sober. Because if they see me high, they're gonna think I'm an addicted bum. We walk in through the front door and there's already a major fork in my plans. Roderick had actually brought me to the hose. I don't even know how to act around the hose when I'm sober. And those pen hits gave me slurp juice brain. Luckily, there was only this one girl named Sarah as we walked in, but I kid you not, she looked exactly like the Fortnite Sunstrider skin. God threw a level 10 baddie my way, and I started getting anxiety. But I couldn't forget the objective at hand. I can't let Sunstrider find out that I'm high. Yo, what's up, Sarah? This is Ninye. Oh my god, Roderick! has told me so much about you. All right, I can't mess up my first introduction. Yo, haha, <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, that wasn't bad. All right, I'm gonna go uh, say hi to everyone else. Bye, guys. God damn it, now I'm all alone with her. So why are you wearing those shades in the middle of the night? Off rip, she's going for my weak spot. I gotta change the subject. Are you very impressed with uh, my style? Fuck. Yeah, you look really cool. This is too stressful. I need to go somewhere to blow off a little steam. Uh, all right, Um, right, where's the bathroom? So we go up upstairs and she shows me to the little man's room and I start doing push-ups on the ground like, ugh, fuck yeah, ugh. I'm trying to get a little pump in an attempt to get my head back in the game. But while grunting and moaning on the floor, I can see Sunstrider's feet from under the little crack of the door on the floor. So hopefully, she didn't get the wrong idea from my sounds. But I waste no time to text Roderick, I'm afraid of the hose, bro, in which he replies, don't worry, I'll clutch up for you. So as I leave the bathroom, Roderick comes up upstairs with a deck of uno cards and a bottle of vodka and starts telling us rules like you two gotta drink every time you draw a card sarah you go first bro is taking some big dog initiative in this situation and then roderick essentially just falls back down the stairs now i'm pretty much locked into playing uno with this one girl at this point but i start dicing her up with these draw fours like i'm a professional at this and in no time sunstrider starts getting all bomba clot from the drink she starts getting into all this girl talk like i fucking hate my friend Melissa, she fucked my ex-boyfriend last week. And I'm like, damn, that's crazy. Well, I keep pulling out these draw fours like nobody's business. Somehow before I knew it, Sunstrider had inched her way to sitting right next to me. She starts taking whole swigs from the bottle and looks at me like, you haven't drank anything yet. You can't be the only sober one. Let's fucking go. This whole time I had successfully masked the fact that I was high and her saying that just confirmed it. So I take a celebratory swig, but then she starts doing some weird shiz, like putting her hand on my thigh like, fuck Melissa anyways! But it turns out she drank more than she could handle because she couldn't control the volume of her voice and she said that really loudly. Before we know it, this girl runs upstairs like, what the fuck did you just say? Turns out Melissa was at the party and heard everything. The two other girls come running up from behind Melissa and a whole fight starts breaking out before I could process what was about to happen to me. Even this girl's little brother walks out of some bedroom. I didn't even know he was in the 
a house, but he starts to get involved in this. I'm just sitting on the floor watching it all unfold until Roderick slowly walks up the stairs behind them and beckons me to come over to him. He's like, yo, I don't know what's going on, but we should probably leave. I'm down, bro. This place is getting a little too heated for me. So we sneak out the front door and drive away. I start telling Roderick about what happened with me completely washing this girl in Una with no remorse for her soul. And he drops the biggest plot twist of the night. It turns out he had rigged the cards and made every other card draw in my favor so that the girl would drink more and make the situation less awkward with me. So if there's any takeaway from this story, take your time with the Benjamin because it hits very hard. Before you know it, you'll get anxiety from the hose. At one point, we've all consumed more substances than we can take and lost some sort of bodily function. Whether that's the loss of literal control over your body or the loss of your mind so you just act on all of your primal monkey thoughts, either way, something is lost. So even if this story is the highest I've ever been, if you've watched me for long enough, you'll know that the only thing that I lose is my shame. I have an ability to hard body substances without ever dropping. So at least originally, this night was going to be planned as a mushroom trip between me, Roman, Adam, and Roderick. And I'll just skip the scene setting because I know you just want to see the drugs. So me and Roman pick up six grams of shrooms, stop by the Holy Land for snacks, arrive at Adam's luxurious estate, and get inside to prepare for the Ninye content farm. Also, Cameron was there too, so let's not forget about him. Round of applause for Cameron, although he was going to be sober and exclusively doing homework on his MacBook this night. So you got the stuff, my brother. Yeah, bro, I got it right here. Let's just bust this bad boy open. We got gypped and the plug only gave us four grams. So the four of us ended up only eating one each. Right after eating these mushrooms, Adam, Roderick, and Roman ran off to probably smoke, but me, but me, I'm more reserved than that. I made the respectable decision to stay back and help Cameron with his homework. And it wasn't because I uh, like him or anything. So me and him bust through a good chunk of these questions until these words start to become a little hard to read. And these mushrooms are making my belly feel a little queasy. Those three goons that left before bust through the door and instantly and simultaneously start explaining how the mushrooms feel to Cameron for some reason. It's really cool, bro. It makes me feel really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome, bro. It feels supliferously awesome. It makes me feel alive. It makes me want to take someone's life. And between my upset tummy and the juxtaposition from solo Cameron time, it felt like I got punched. Boys, I want to do homework right now. Frick you, yeah, bro. Fuck off, bro. What are you talking about? I was being bullied. You know what? I'm gonna go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh my god. Despite us all having just one gram each, they were enough. These were some strong guys. As I had that moment to myself and overcame the queasy, I left the bathroom and everyone was gone. Although, I heard faint music from the porch. As I walked out, I see these four are smoking a big dog style cigar in the snow outside and Cameron was making beats in Logic Pro. Ooh, there's the big homework, baby. What'd you do in the bathroom, bro? Put a diaper on? Did you put a diaper on in the bathroom? Fog homework, bro. Check this out. This was my snapping point. My friends were relentlessly bullying me, and I had to do something now to redeem the great Ninye name I was known for. Give me that cigar, boys. Check this out. <sighs> Damn, bro, you're not supposed to inhale it. This didn't exactly hit the way I thought it would, but in this moment, a shining opportunity presented itself. Who wants weed, boys? So all of us, minus Cameron, scurry our little feet downstairs into the garage and hop in Adam's classic weed Porsche. Adam pulls out the big dog bong, and I knew this was the time. This was the moment I would fully redeem my stained legacy and go down a legend. I got handed the bong first, and as as I held it, all my memories flashed through me like visions. When Roderick called me a homework baby, when Roman said I wore diapers, it would all be sanctified in this moment. I lit up and as I'm sucking on this bong, I don't let go. I take the biggest bong rip of my life until my lung capacity can't take a single more milliliter of smoke. As I exhaled, the entire car is filled with smoke and I'm coughing like Walter White. This shit hard 
started. Afterward, I just lay down in the back of the car while my body recovered. The bong was passed around a few rotations, but I couldn't take any more, so I just waited until we all finally got out. And once I stood up, I realized how high I was. So as we all stumble back to the bedroom, I go up to Cameron and I ask him, Bro, let me see the laptop, bro. I had a golden joke cooking. I sit down with Roman in an attempt to open Google Images, search for Patrick Bateman, and my joke was gonna be that I said that was Cameron doing his homework. But I only got to search Patrick in the search bar before I hit enter, which brought up Patrick Star, which had this image from an Amazon link to a Funko Pop that the two of us found a lot funnier than the original joke would have been. But then, I took it further by clicking on the image, bringing me to Amazon where I bought it. I bought the Funko from Cameron's laptop on his account with his card and shipped it to his parents house. I was on fire. I was in my element here. Then Adam brings out the vodka and I'm chugging that thing like a division one football player. Then Adam brings out the canned wine and I'm chugging those things like a division one football player. I had completed the holy trinity of substances, earth, water, fire, but I was missing air. And I don't normally do this, but I start ripping Roderick's vape. And with all these substances combined into me, I was just like Avatar Aang. I guess my mind was still on Spongebob because I really wanted Cameron to play the outro song from Spongebob on his MacBook. But the video Cameron brought up wasn't just the Spongebob outro. It was, I put the Spongebob outro over the end of humanity. And as soon as this video came up, I had another golden bit to come to me. One that would even top the Funko Pop one. Cameron, hold your laptop up so that everyone can see. Boys, this video is something I've worked very hard on over the past few years, and I'm so happy to finally have it come to fruition. You didn't make that, bro. That's a YouTube video. They want you to believe that. But let me continue. As you know, my YouTube channel has grown at an extremely fast rate recently, and I wanted to celebrate the monumental achievement of 200,000 subscribers with a celebration that's fitting. So I've planted 200,000 bombs across New York City, and what you're seeing now is live drone footage broadcasted from my channel. But it's not just New York. The more subscribers I get, the more bombs I plant. Until even we are are engulfed by fire and explosion. It's just my way of saying thank you for all of the support I've received thus far. As you can imagine, that bit killed it. I could confidently say that my name was saved from the disaster of earlier that night. I walked out of the room and into Adam's library basking in glory. Like I said, he has a luxurious estate. He has a library. And still vaping, I sit on his oversized reading throne until I passed out for the night. Okay, that's the story. Subscribe. Bye. The relationship with the plug is more impactful on your life as that of your parents. But what precedes that relationship with the plug is a constant and brooding struggle to find the one. Those moments when you struggle to find the plug at the climax of a dark and damp boys night, it's a formative canon event that bonds us all. Sometimes you come out the trenches dry and you and your boys throw in the towel on finding a plug. But when the gang clutches up and secures Here's that last minute plug for the night. The moment is nothing shy of pure bliss. I can't imagine any other scenario more intense. And an intense night was surely ahead of me and the boys. When a very tantalizing Friday night opportunity presented itself during the before school round table discussion. Boys, who's trying to get into a little trouble tonight? Oh, you don't You mean. couldn't possibly mean. I think you lads know exactly what I mean. All right, so you got any of that skiddly diddly hopscotch diddle drip on you bro nope yeah my pockets are empty oh damn well i guess we've got to get a plug on our hands and right then phase one of the plug struggle began as all desperate high schoolers do when in need of a little grass we all spammed everyone we have added on our snapchat we all tried different approaches starting with the simple and to the point method anyone got grass we tried the desperate attempt hey bro please does anyone have weed i need is so bad, bro. And we even tried the really desperate method. Hey, bro, would you trade a couple dozen tamales for a perk? And by the time the gang got back together after our first few periods, it was like, all right, boys, let's see the plugs for tonight. What did you all get? The only snap I got back was a picture of this girl's forehead. What about you guys? I got the left side of her face, but I think she wants me, bro. Damn, all I got was 
left undelivered by Team Snapchat. I think it was safe to say phase one was a complete train wreck. So next was on to phase two. The second phase of our plug struggle was just straight up going up to every group we could find at lunch and asking them if they had a plug. Yo, you guys got a plug? Uh, yeah, so uh, let's see, we got iPhone plugs. Let's see, we got uh, another iPhone plug. What do you have, Sarah? Oh, uh, let's see, I got an iPhone plug. You guys know a plug? Listen here, little boy. Bow down when you talk to me so I can hold you still and make sweet love to that little pretty face. Yo, you guys know a plug I can use for tonight? Oh, yeah, bro. Here, I'll give you a snap. And just like that, Roman brought all of the boys together. For phase two of the plan was a monumental success. The anticipation for this night followed the three of us until school finally let out and we could make the moves towards phase three. Messaging the plug. So we hit him up like, hey, bro, we're trying to acquire tonight. You up, baby? And he's like, yeah, man, meet me here at 9 p.m. tonight. And just like that, we had a time and place. The plug struggle was really looking like it was coming to an end. It was a bright future for the boys. So when night fell, we all sat there on Roderick's bed, kicking our legs and twiddling our thumbs for the clock to strike nine. And once the time came, we all sprinted out the house and drove 150 miles an hour to the location. But when we got to the spot, we were starting to get a really bad feeling. As it turned out, the location this plug wanted to meet us at had to be the most suspect, dark, and desolate public park we could have ever been to. We're looking around for this guy from the car and don't see anyone. We thought there was gonna be no time before red and blue lights start flashing. But then we get a Snapchat from the plug like, is that you that just pulled up? And we're like, yeah, that's us. So then he replies with, come into the playground. I'm in the fucking slide. The three of us walked into the playground and bro was not lying. He was sitting in the slide. So what you guys want tonight? We want weed. I know, but like, we would like a joint for the each of us. Oh, I only got carts. Damn. All right. Well, that's cool. We'll take that. So we make the exchange and this dude only gives us the cart with no battery. So what about the battery, bro? Oh, I don't sell batteries. I only have carts. We thought this guy was scamming us. I mean, we can't do this shit with just a cart, but that's when the plug explains tweaker wires to us. Yeah, man, all you gotta do is cut a phone charger in half and you can use the wires to power the battery. It gets you really high though, so be careful. Oh, wow. So the girls at school did know what they were talking about. Now, we didn't want to question this plug anymore because we weren't about to get pushed down a slide or whatever this dude would do to us. So the three of us just trusted his word, even though that sounded like it couldn't possibly work and considered phase three a kind of success. So we drove back to Roderick's and phase four to smoke the carts was initiated. We were stressing about the information this plug told us and if it was true or not. All right, so who's gonna be the sacrifice to try this first? I don't know, bro. What if this explodes in our faces and kills oh, us? Oh, damn, true. It can't be that bad. I feel like nothing's gonna happen. So you wanna do it? I'm down, bro. I'll be the sacrifice. Oh, damn. So we set up the wires like the plug told us and Roderick starts sucking this car out of an iPhone charger. Yo, no way. Ain't no way that's working, bro. <coughs> bro, do you feel high? Did it really work? Bro, it's like I hit the cart, but the house was the battery. No way. He's for sure high, dude. So what's it feel like? Is it good for us to smoke? <coughs> dude, I mean, help yourself, but this shit is hitting me like a fucking semi-truck. Roderick got ubiquitously sent into the shadow realm from that hit. It turns out that when you use tweaker wires, it makes you tweak. The electricity heats up the oil way hotter than a battery does, which in turn puts more weed particles into the inhalation, and in turn makes you higher than you could ever imagine. Damn, I guess it's either we get too high or we aren't high at all. Nah, man, <coughs> I know one way, I know a method. I didn't want to do this, but my cousin can get some for you guys. Oh, for real? All right, so what's his number? It's, uh, five, four, no, I, th I think it's four, nine, five, 
four no, uh nah that ain't it i think it's four five nine four uh no that's not it uh, bro is too high damn we ended up having to unlock Roderick's phone with his face id and texted his cousin on his behalf hello yes this is Roderick, and i would like to attain some weed for my two friends that sounds professional bro and after like 30 minutes Roderick's cousin pulls up and takes me and roman to the dispensary this car ride was so awkward because since Roderick was coming completely obliterated he didn't end up coming with us but cousin Roderick pulled through and got us a battery so we could smoke the cart after that side quest we came back to Roderick to see that in the time we were gone bro postmated burger king twice you gotta be on another planet to order postmates twice let alone burger king he had a pov video of some dude walking through china pulled up on his tv but upon further inspection Roderick was completely completely passed out on the bed with a double whopper still in his hand. But in the end, even though we had one soldier down, phase four was a success as well. Me and Roman finally got to smoke the cart and the plug struggle we went through prior only made the high hit even better. And once we got high, I won't lie, those China videos Roderick had on started to hit. We were straight up entranced by this video and we came out of this with a whole new appreciation for our plug. So make sure to text your plug you love them and if you can get free weed from them anyways that's the video subscribe bye smoking the grass is unironically my career at this point so you'd think i could hold my own against a little something something right but this new year's i had a man of very high stature and business class offer me some za from his world and it was like nothing i had ever done up until that very moment but like i said it was new year's the whole gang was downtown following Roderick around like little baby ducks because he supposedly had a surprise for all of us. So once we all get to the square where the ball drop was going to happen, he leads us all into an office building and up this elevator. Are we even supposed to be here, dude? I don't care. I literally was not asking you. Bro, get me out, sus. Get me out. Gentlemen, trust me. We're good. Now collect yourselves and become presentable. We get to the top floor and step into this massive office building over overlooking downtown. To my side, there's a table covered with tons of different drinks. Yo, what is this place? It's my parents' office, lads. And then out of the corner of my eye, I see him. It's big man Roderick's very own father. But he explains to the group that throughout the night, all of his lawyer and business friends would be coming through and that we were all welcome to as many drinks as we wanted. So the boys Go feral. Let's go. Hey, give me that. Thank you. You want my vape, bro? All right. Oh, God. I miss her. I miss her, bro. You know, sharing always makes me feel better. <laughs> Do not fret. Cameron was the sober man that would be taking us all home this night. We were all being very responsible. So we all start opening the office windows and yell nonsense at random pedestrians. Before we know it, the place starts to fill with lawyers. The group breaks up, and in the presence of all of these high value you individuals i taught some guy's wife how to floss 10 p.m was closely approaching which meant that the first ball drop was about to happen before the real one at midnight we all link up look out the window and despite this not even being the real new year's celebration the streets are filled with swarms of people as we all marvel at this horde we see a familiar face standing outside it was our boy tony we need to go out there so we all run down the stairwell and out the back exit but as we left the door we ran past one of the big dog lawyers that i had recognized seeing upstairs and he was smoking something so i made a mental note before joining the crowd we gave tony monumental greetings until ball drop time was about to happen we all run to the center of the crowd bust down excellent style for a few minutes until returning back to the lawyer office stench and sweat covered from all of that bussing back up the elevator i lead the squad into a 
small conference room and explain to them. Boys, 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 boys. I think there's weed on the premises. I want to get my hands on it before the real New Year's event happens. So we start scouting around the office looking for the guy I had seen earlier. We ended up finding him still at the same spot prior. And as we walked out, the legend offered us some. So we all, minus Cameron, smoked with this lawyer. And before it really hit us, it was quite chill. So once we had our fun, it was back up to the office to devour the sandwich rolls and prepare for battle at midnight. Roman and Roderick start devouring every last crumb like savage berserkers, but I'm feeling a little differently. Yo, guys, that lawyer stuff is really hitting diff right now. How do you feel? Uh, I'm gonna go to that conference room again. So I'm sitting in the conference room alone. On the floor, I find a bunch of strings and start assorting them from longest to shortest. These two women walk into the room like, Ah, oh, what are you doing? I'm playing with strings to stay alive. And that's all I remember out of that interaction. There was this dude that also came in as well, and he talked to me for like five minutes, but I have no memory of a word he said. Eventually, Cameron and Adam came into the room. Bro, we lost Roman and Roderick. Lamau. Do you need to go home, dude? Yeah. All right, bro, we'll try and call them. In about 18 phone calls were made to Roman's phone and not one was answered. Cameron and Adam decided they'd face the New Year's storm out in the streets to look for the two while I stayed up in the office, so they moved out. It didn't take long for me to get bored of sitting in this conference room, so I get up and leave to look out the window and watch the ball drop from there. As I'm staring out this window, I eventually do see Roman and Roderick out there going crazy in the square. I watch them for a few minutes until Roderick walks away to get drinks from a bar or something. So Roman's out there all alone. Then there's this big middle-aged dude pushing his way through the crowd of people for I don't know why. Roman was in a big man's trajectory. So once he eventually shoves Roman, Roman shoves him back. And then this dude punches Roman so hard that he falls to the ground and the police detain the unhinged big man. After seeing that, I thought, well, I should let them know I found Roman. So I walked down calling Cameron, telling him to meet me at the office entrance. Is the both of us link? It's about a minute until New Year's and everyone around us is going bananas. So we just stay put not to lose each other. Once midnight struck and the ball dropped, I just stared up into the sky completely unmoving and honestly feeling nothing. That za had me a stoic. So where's Roman? Uh, I lost him. Damn. Okay, well, I'm just gonna take you home, bro. You're clearly sloshed. I'll find them later. So my handsome little savior drives me back to my place. I get inside, and as I'm taking my stuff out of my pockets, I realized I still have Roderick's vape, but I didn't care and instantly passed out. And if you want to know what happened with Roman after this dude punched him and what went down once I left, you're gonna have to wait three months for when Roman makes his own video because I don't know what happened. Boo hoo! Okay, that's the story. Subscribe. Bye! Greening out is allegedly worse than cutting off limbs. However, despite being the massive za head that I am, I've never actually experienced that climax. I've had friends go through it before my very eyes and seen the absolute destruction that defaults their now forever ruined bodies. But me, I've never had it happen to me until today. When my constant push for entertaining content ended up pushing me over the edge and greening out for the first time. The night started off normal enough. I was watching Diva twerk compilations, Ice Spice full view oiled up bust down 4k while off a few gummies as I do every night. When I had a thought come to me, hmm, I haven't left my bed in like a week. I need to get into some video material mischief right now or else I'm gonna felled off. So I took another two gummies and shot a text over to none other than the absolute legend Roderick himself. Bro, I need you to come over to my house this instant. Please, please, please. All right, bro. I got you. I'll be there in a minute. Roderick pulled up instantly with his massive stature and Greek godlike appearance and was clutching none other than his epic weed in one hand and a bag of some yummies in the other. Shutting the door behind ourselves, I gave Roderick massive greetings into my humble abode and seeing what he had brought, I knew exactly what was about to go down. So we sat on the couch and began to do our thing. We both ended up taking about a million hits each before finally 
finally giving it a bit of a break. And let me tell you, at this point, I was already feeling higher than something that's really tall. Now scrolling YouTube, I saw a gym motivational video pop up in my recommended. I don't usually watch these types of things, but having been reading Vagabond and practicing the way of the samurai, I was feeling strong and in need of constant self-improvement. And being as high as I was, this seemed like exactly the thing that would push me beyond my human limits. We watched the whole thing in silence, but the raw emotion was louder than anything I've ever felt. The only noise we made was at the end, where we both let out mighty roars, ready to take on any foe. Bro, I need conflict! Hey, let's bust out the push-ups, why don't we, my brother? Come on, let's just get on the floor. <laughs> As soon as we stood up, I found it really hard not to stumble around and realized there was no actual way for me to do anything. Neither of us were really able to move, and even if we did, we'd probably hurt ourselves. Okay, bro, I can't actually do this. Let's just watch people work out on the TV instead. All right, dude, but the punishment for not working out right now is that we have to smoke more weed, which I gladly accepted. And in this very moment, I knew exactly what I had to do. Bro, 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 bro. Oh, uh, yeah. I have to smoke endless weed and green out for views. It's what the people want. I have to persevere for those massive YouTube numbers. Us both finding this idea very funny, Roderick and I did a few more rotations of that smoky smoky to really send ourselves flying. Finishing up this round, we decided it would probably be best if we got one other person in here to help me keep on my mission. So we decided to hit up our boy Cameron to come over and make sure we were able to keep focused. He eventually came over and when we opened the door for him, we were nothing more than shells of our former selves. We had smoked ourselves into mere husks of who we used to be. But I was still talking coherent enough that Cameron knew his job wasn't complete. Hey, how's it going, lads? Not good. I don't think I can handle this anymore. I might have gone over my head for this one, dude. That's all right, bro. That's why I'm here. Think of the views, dude. Let the views motivate you. Just seeing Cameron's shining smile motivated me to go a little further. I took a few more hits, but not nearly enough to green out. But I was high enough to be brain dead. After a few minutes had passed, I heard another knock at my door. My first thought I had to myself was, oh, Cameron must have gotten here, forgetting he had arrived minutes ago. When I opened the door, it was actually some missionaries that had came from the church, inviting me to a local event they were hosting. I start to panic here. I couldn't even remember that Cameron had entered my house, so I knew I couldn't communicate with the missionaries. Oh, you guys, hey, come here, come over here. My words were bullshit, but sounded convincing enough to be real. I got Cameron to the door and ran away to hide. Oh yeah, Cameron already got here. He took care of those guys for me real good. The missionary encounter had shaken me up a bit and faltered my motivation visibly. I'm struggling here, my boy. You're gonna need to do something real moving to get me any further, Cameron. Then he did something I never expected him to do in my life. In an act of true selflessness and purity, he ate his first ever edible for my sake. Now that I'm gonna be high for the first time, boys, you gotta do this. Having witnessed such a manly and awesome moment, I now knew what had to be done. I wasn't gonna let anything stop me. Not even the dizziness that was absolutely beginning to obliterate me, just like I do to Ice Spice, could stop me. I took another gummy and took one last giant rip of the bong. And just like that, it was all over. My moment had finally come. After a few minutes, I began feeling the full effects. I was getting incredibly dizzy and nauseous. Standing became a near impossible task, and just the sound of Roderick and Cameron talking felt overstimulating and overly loud to the point I couldn't handle it. Honestly, this part gets kind of a little fuzzy in my mind, but I eventually managed to get carried upstairs to my bed, now unable to even get words out of my mouth. And in this instant, I immediately knew that I was just like Drake because I was out like a light. Anyway, 
Dabs are an extremely potent method of smoking that I don't even mess with or really understand. Huh? You need this little thingy bobber, this doohickey, a tiny ivory ball that spins around, and a whole blowtorch. I tried to watch this tutorial to understand how it worked, but I ended up more confused than I came in. So I'm not gonna try and understand how this high-level winter hold Skyrim sorcery works. That's for the high elves to know. The only thing I know is you use a blowtorch on THC oil, and that's crazy to me. So don't look to me for information i never made it out of pre-calculus i just tell the funny stories so a few years ago i found this rando at school because my little buddy roman has a way of locating strangers and instantly befriending them we could call this dude uh let's see uh lois ruler of the high elves so roman comes up to me and he's like yo i met this dude named lois in my class you want to come over to his house with me and i had never gone over to someone's house before meeting them so i thought yeah that'd be funny i'm down so after school we meet up at lois's house House and enter this nice massive home after we came through the door and met him he mentioned that tonight was going to be an epic no parents are home we can do anything we want type of deal so we popped off and he led us into his bedroom as soon as we entered his room it reeks and there's garbage everywhere bro's room was completely different from the rest of the house he had clothes all over the ground in probably like food crumbs in his bed sheets but the most bizarre thing he had was an open bag of coffee beans lying on the ground under his desk. I asked him, bro, why do you have an entire whole thing of coffee beans in your bedroom? And he explained to me how when his parents make him go to bed at night, he likes to secretly stay up and game. But when he gets too tired, he swallows the beans whole with some water because he doesn't know how to use a coffee machine. And that was the first red flag that we were in the presence of an actual sociopath. And then he wasted no time to instantly pull out the entire dab rig. So you guys ever smoked dabs? And to be honest, neither of us really even knew what dab were at this point but we didn't say all that we were just like nah and then this kid proceeded to pull out one of those wax weed pens and a syringe he opened up the pen extracting out the wax with the syringe and squirting it into the dab machine and i feel like there's no way this can be good for you you're definitely not supposed to use pen wax for dabs i'm sure there's some chemicals in there that would make you grow a third arm and immediately see demons all around you but this kid just goes straight for it he was clearly a pro at this and then he hands it over to the two of us like it's just implied that this is normal and we'd smoke this dude's mulch weed either way we did do it because we succumbed to the peer pressure that accompanied that silence but the thing about dabs is that they hit extremely hard so as we smoked this me and roman ended up getting way higher than we anticipated way faster than we had ever been at this point without even a word spoken as if this was just an average day for lois he started queuing up League of Legends on his laptop. That was the second red flag that we got from this kid. League of Legends has like 40 minute long games and I wasn't about to watch this kid that I don't even know play a game I hardly know for 40 minutes while high off my first dab hit. But then he has the audacity to ask the two of us to get him a glass of water since he was getting into a game. And to this day, I literally cannot wrap my head around the situation that we had gotten ourselves into. We go to this random kid's house we don't even know, smoke his suspicious weed and then he ignores us and the fact that he's so casual about the whole situation makes me think that he's done this to other victims and every time his parents go out he just picks a new kid from school to do his bidding so me and roman go down to this dude's really nice kitchen and start eating all of his food while plotting and praying on his downfall in one hand we had a really cool house to stay in and we could just eat all of their expensive snacks with no real repercussions on the other we we'd have to spend the night with this strange elf person that kind of seems like he's using us. In the end, we decided to troop it out for the night because, to be honest, if we were to leave, we probably couldn't find our way home in the current state we were in. We brought up this dude's little YY drinky in the sippy cup and tried to make some kind of conversation with him just to see if he was going to do anything else but play League. But the way he was glued to this game, we kind of realized that this was all he was going to do. So we just walked out of the room and started exploring and pillaging all around this dude's massive house i mean it's not very often that you get to go through a stranger's house with no supervision and off a dab hit and let me tell you this exploration felt otherworldly because of it the house could have felt way bigger than it was because we were high but going through the hallways the rooms just felt endless the amount of bedrooms were ungodly in this house and it took all of me and roman's collective willpower to not steal their belongings it was like getting into the loot vault in fortnite 
Knight in resisting the urge to take a golden scar. We eventually found what seemed like a family computer room, so we decided to set up camp there. We migrated back to the kitchen to get our yummy snacks and came back with a massive load of epic foods. We kind of just played random games on this dude's computer for a few hours, and the whole time this kid did not come looking for us. We set an hourly alarm to routinely check on the kid just to see what was going on with him, but he was literally just playing league all night. Multiple hours passed of this, and it got to the point where we entered ungodly hours of the night, and we just wanted to go to bed. But this dude was completely unwavering in the face of the tiredness. He was gaming all night. This went on for so long, we just started to theorize this kid forgot we were in his house. But we didn't want to go to bed because it felt weird to just sleep in a stranger's bed. So we conducted a plan to sneak out of the dude's house undetected. We called our friend Adam to pick us up a few blocks down from the house. And on our way out, we stole a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos and tactically shut the front door behind us very sneakily and quietly. We got out of the house and the next day at school, the kid didn't even mention anything or talk to us. And it was almost like he didn't even know the whole thing happened. Ever since then, I haven't smoked dabs because it was a weird experience. But anyways, subscribe. Smoking alone for the first time can be a daunting task. A little inexperience can make you truly fear you'll smoke the grass wrong and end up in the shadow realm. And a part of that's true. If you never smoked alone before, you gotta understand it leaves you susceptible to your demons more than any other scenario. In Fortnite terms, running solos can really feel like you queued solo squads with the amount of demons you gotta fight off. Truthfully, I'm not one to talk though, because the first time I smoked alone, I did it out a goddamn banana. I was truly struggling back in the day. This particular instance of my first time, I think it was my fourth time ever smoking weed in my life. I came into it so inexperienced, I didn't even consider something could go wrong. It was the day after I had some boys over. We had gone questing for Zaza the night prior, and when the next day came, I had a little leftover nugget in my name. So once they all left my abode, I got a real sinister and evil idea inside of me. I got the idea to smoke it on my lonesome. The only issue, I was so new to weed, I didn't even have a method to smoke it. I went on Google and looked up homemade ways to smoke weed, and that's how the banana thing happened. Then came the second problem all low-level za smokers encounter, and that's masking the smell. And to be honest, I don't really have a very keen nose. My sense of smell is kind of fucking bad. But I just turned my fan on full and blew the smoke out the window. It was really the best I had. I won't lie though, the banana was goaded. The banana was a little too goaded because I ended up smoking way more of that razzmatazz hop skiddly do than I thought the banana was capable of. <gasps> I expected some janky doohickey that hardly worked, but the banana method was truly valid. I only took like two to three hits since my tolerance was so abysmally small. But even from that, I started to see God. The chronic lung pain started to settle in immediately. It was so bad, I was praying to God, like, please, Lord, free me of this pain. I didn't mean to smoke this weed. It was an accident. I really don't know how this happened. I was in recovery from this for like half an hour. I straight up thought it would never end and my high would be ruined because of it. So once I healed, I went on TikTok to rot myself from the inside out. But in my scrolling, there was one video that really stood out to me. It was specifically this one image from the video of a Lego Star Wars man. I stared at this picture for like 20 minutes, completely dumbfounded and in awe. I couldn't comprehend this Lego man, and it just didn't look right to me. So I did my research and watched the entirety of Lego Star Wars Episode 3 until precisely 12 minutes and 8 seconds into the video, when I saw him. This is not the same as this, and it fucked me up. Immediately, I called Roderick like, Bro, they fucking changed him, bro. What are you talking about? This Lego guy, he's not the same. They changed him. You have to come over right now, dude. I'll show you. So Roderick heads over to my house while I cannot comprehend why they changed a Lego man. He pulls up and I get the text that he's outside and suddenly my brain 
brain does the vine boom sound effect. Wait a minute. If I gotta go get Roderick, that means I gotta go through my house. That means I could be seen by my very own mother. I looked in the mirror to do a quick checkup and bruh, my eyes looked like Squidward when he said, I'm all out of money. And I had no idea if I smelt or not. So I sprint downstairs as fast as I can, acquire young Roderick at the door and take him into my room. Almost immediately, he's like, hey bro, it smells like weed in here. And my brain goes vine boom sound effect with extra reverberation and bass boosted. Ain't no way, bro. Please say you're joking, bro. I can't have that be the truth. Nah, dude, it smells like weed. I start to panic. I don't know how potent the smell is, and I don't know if the smell had leaked out when I left my room. Now the objective has changed. It's no longer about Lego men anymore. It was about getting rid of the smell as to avoid getting a beating. I showed Roderick the banana, so he took it from me like, all right, this makes sense. The source of the smell has got to be coming from this banana. So what do we do about it? Give me a lighter. Oh, all right. And Roderick starts smoking out the banana, not before eating the whole thing. Eating that banana is just downright awful. All right, dude. Now the source of the smell is inside of me. So as long as I don't open my mouth very much, it can't get out. Oh, wow, bro. That's genius. I didn't know you had this much intelligence. Hey, I'm not done cooking yet. We got to get the smell out of the atmosphere now. The atmosphere? Yeah, dude, the atmosphere. Go get a vacuum. Go get a vacuum. So I run and get the vacuum. Then bro turns on the vacuum nozzle and starts attempting to suck the weed smell out of the bedroom's atmosphere. Wait, wait, wait. That vacuum is too loud. It's going to bring suspicion to the noise. Oh, damn. Good thinking. And in an attempt to soundproof my bedroom, me and Roderick take my bed mattress off the frame and push it up against the door. Once we had thoroughly sucked all stench from the atmosphere, Roderick was like, all right, we got to vacuum the floor now because the odor can trap itself in the carpet. So let's suck it out. So then we vacuum my entire bedroom. Our soundproofing was apparently not good at all because all of a sudden my mom opens my door to see what all the noise was and the mattress falls on Roderick. What's all this noise? Oh, you know, I'm just cleaning my room. Are you okay, dude? I think my rib punctured my lung. Okay, but we should be all good with the smell now. This was perfect because now I could show Roderick how they changed the way Lego General Grievous looks in Lego Star Wars. So I showed him the difference and bro didn't really care. He never played Lego Star Wars, so he didn't really have any reaction. After that anticlimactic reveal, he just <laughs> headed home and I was back to being high alone. But since we had cleaned my room, I won't lie, I felt like a king. I felt like I was living in the highest echelon of society. So I took a whole shower for like 30 minutes in complete bliss. Once I was done, I got out and looked out my window to enjoy the view to see Roderick's car was still outside my house. It turns out he forgot he drove to my house and he was walking home this entire time. So I called Roman to get Roderick to take him to my house so he can take his car home. So we go through with the plan until Roderick gets back to my house and he's like, I'm high, I can't drive. So we call Adam to drive over and bring Kevin to drive Roderick's car home. In the meantime, me, Roderick, and Roman all go up to my bedroom and as soon as Roman steps in, he's like, it smells like weed in here. Are you joking? After all the atmospheric sucking we did, it still smells like weed. So Roman did a little scouting around until he finds little bits of weed all over my bathroom counter. It turns out Roderick had just spilled them all out before eating the banana and forgot that they were out in the open. So Adam and Kevin come to my house and as Kevin gets ready to drive Roderick back home, he realized he doesn't know how to drive a stick shift. So we need Adam now to drive Roderick's car since he doesn't know how to drive a stick shift. And they did a whole thing that I completely tuned out because I'm high and can't mentally comprehend their plan. As I'm watching them try and figure this all out, I'm just thinking, damn, if they never changed the way that lady Lego guy looked, none of this would be happening right now. So since I just kind of tuned this whole thing out, I decided to sneakily turn around and just walk back into my house while this chaos is transpiring outside. Even though at the heart of the cause, it was my fault, I was just like, I can't deal with this right now. And as I went into my room, I won't lie, I still smelt the weed at this point. But I couldn't really bother to care about that either. I was just so mentally fried and I was so high, I decided I would just watch
watch funny videos on my iPhone SE until I passed out. Okay, that's the video. Subscribe button. These big old doohickeys are notorious for being the kings of smoking equipment. Just look at this list. It's at number one. And it's for a good reason. Anyone who's ever used one knows just how lethal a few hits can be. And I did 10. 10 big hits living to tell the tale, baby. I was in a smoke competition with this guy that is genuinely unhinged and vile as a person, but we'll get into that. It all started in one of my stacked classrooms. I had Roderick, Adam, Roman, need I say more. But there was one unnamed mystery individual in this class as well. No one knew him, but also everybody knew of him. He'd always be dressed up extremely classily. He had this pot hat he always wore. He had those anime hoodies in his classic lightning bolt crocs the dude dressed so loudly despite never speaking a word once until roman did his talking to strangers thing and came up to the squad like yo guys i talked to the croc guy he seems kind of cool i'm gonna hang out with him but then i'm gonna hang out with him quickly turned into we all hang out with him because the three of us were just too curious to meet this guy we had to be there so the plans were made of course at adam's magnificent property the day had come and the boys were all dressed up head to toe for croc guy's arrival as he burst through the front door we were all pleasantly surprised to see he was still sporting that iconic look considering his hat we wasted no time to get to the point you want to smoke uh sure so we get the equipment and i'll tiptoe downstairs ready for smoke time so how often you smoke that epic bro um uh, just about every day Oh, all right. So you think you can do more than I can? Huh? Well, uh, why don't we find out? Huh? So I grab that thing, take a hit, and pass it over to him. It goes around its rotation about three more times before the big man Adam has to tap out. Two more rotations, and Roderick taps out. Then ultimately, once we get to the seventh hit, I look over at Croc Guy, and he says to me, Um, I can't do this anymore. So me and Roman do a celebratory dance to commemorate Vic. I feel on top of the world. We need to go to the gym. So we go into Adam's home gym. Like I said, he's got quite the estate. And me and Roman start hitting this punching bag with no remorse for our hands. In the face of success in seven bong rips, there was no pain to be felt. But Roman must have had some serious demons because he took it pretty far, but he's the unhinged one, so it's not unexpected of him. After we broke our actual hands, we walk back over to meet with the group downstairs. But it's important to know as we walked back, I was walking behind Roman. We were met at a crossroad where going left would lead us downstairs, which was where everyone was, but going right would lead us to Adam's bedroom, where I could swear I heard some kind of noise from. But I had thought that everyone was still downstairs. Did they come up to Adam's room? Roman didn't hear this, so he kept walking without realizing I had stopped behind him. So I turned alone and walked towards Adam's bedroom, and as I walked in, I see the cross guy laying on the floor but I didn't see anyone else. Uh, yo, what's up? No response. I walk closer and I see he's passed out in a weed coma of some sort but as my eyes wander down I see the croc guy is um exposed. I'm frozen for a moment before I slowly just walk out of the room to not make a noise. Bro, what was that? I knew we should have never hung out with the croc, dude. Oh my god, I need to tell everyone else about this right now. Once I got downstairs, I see Roderick freestyling and I freeze up again. Being as high as I was, I realized it would be pretty awkward to explain the situation to them. So alternatively, the plan was to naturally lead them into finding out themselves. Themselves. But before I said anything, there was one absolutely fire bar Roderick said during his freestyle, which went along the lines of, She didn't want to fuck me but she should have. After that heat was spoken, I said, guys, let's all go upstairs. Okay, but let's smoke more. So we do the bong rotation three more times before going upstairs, and I'm just hammered. I am smashed from these hits, dude. As we walk up and towards the room, Roman yells out, bro, we need to go to the pool. I want to see what the water looks like. So the great croc guy reveal was delayed while the four of us sit by Adam's pretty sweet indoor pool. But to be honest, because of all those 
extra bong rips, I kind of forgot at this point the trauma that I had seen earlier. Something had snapped inside of me just out of nowhere at this pool because I start talking to myself. We're going to war, boys. This is gonna be the end. What are you talking about, bro? We're in the cryopod, bro. We're freezing ourselves in the cryopod before we go to die at war on the fire planet. You're on something else right now. Yeah, I have no idea what he's talking about. Tell me, should I die for my family or for my country? Definitely the country, bro. Yeah, definitely. When I'm out there, I don't have a family. I just created an entire headcanon in my mind that we were these space soldiers. I don't know where it came from, but it was funny. We should leave the pool, Roman. That was a shit idea. As everyone left, I kind of lagged behind for 30 seconds or so before I got up. And because of that, I exited out of the wrong door because I'm directionally impaired. I ended up on the other side of the house in the living room. There was jazz playing, the Christmas tree was set up, dim lighting. This was the absolute peak environment to be in. So I sat down for a minute alone to take in the environment when my peace was suddenly interrupted by screaming at the other end of the house. Then I finally remembered that atrocity in Adam's bedroom that I forgot about. But I didn't bother to go over there since the situation I was in was just too good. So I just laughed about it alone from a completely different end of the house while my three friends just went through torture. I couldn't be bothered when I was this high and cozy. Eventually, I just kind of fell asleep and the boys handled it. I don't know what exactly they did to the croc guy, but whatever happened was surely a solution. Okay, that's the story. Subscribe. Edibles are cheeky little buggers. You never know exactly what you'll get from them. Sometimes you'll eat one and feel nothing. Sometimes you'll eat one and feel everything. And sometimes you'll eat one, think you feel nothing. So you eat another and another until all you feel is pain everywhere. The trick is simply getting them from trustworthy sources and being a little patient with the gummy. But somehow this seems too hard for most people, myself included. I was neither patient nor safe this fateful afternoon, which made for my most intense edible experience ever. Now, this was back in high school, so getting from a reliable source isn't as easy as it is now. Instead of getting the edibles from a dispensary, you have to get them from Howard, a grade above you, that claims he definitely is the Heisenberg of edibles and can cook up the best stuff. It doesn't help that I was surely at the peak of Mount Stupid on the Dunning-Kruger effect curve, where my confidence was at an all-time high with weed and my experience was very low. I was naive in the face of Howard's homemade edibles, so I bought a batch of them after school, took them home for the weekend, and prepared for an epic freaking time while I had the house to myself. You already know, before I ate these, I was showing them off to the boys. I was like, look at the fresh booty this young boy got his hands on. But I wasn't about wasting time. It was business time. It was time to eat the edibles. I started by just eating one of the four I had bought. And right from the moment it touched my tongue, I could taste just how weed infested these brownies were. But I got it down. Then with every passing second, I analyzed how I felt. And when you think about time that hard, it makes it feel like it passes way slower than it actually does. What feels like 30 minutes is actually 10. And what feels like a weak edible is actually a bombshell that hasn't gone off. So I thought this one should have hit by now. I guess it's just weak. If this is how one feels, I can definitely take an extra two. And we all know how this goes. As all of these edibles hit at once, my body is instantly essentially paralyzed. I got the cotton mouth of a lifetime, which marked the only time in my life where I wanted water more than pussy money or weed. So I just lay here like, god damn, I didn't sign up for this. So I try and roll over to get my phone and text the boys group chat that I was on my deathbed. But my body couldn't roll over without me using 100% of my brain power to do so. As I picked up my phone, it felt insanely heavy. I had the 40 pound iPhone. The phone was just way too heavy for me to pick up, so I was left with one option. I couldn't text. I had to send a voice memo. Yo, guys, uh, uh, this shit is hitting for real. 
I think I need help. Send over the reinforcements to my place. I'm dying. Which was a pretty funny message to follow from the previous one. So once the message was out, so was I. My body shut down for I don't even know how long. But when I came back into consciousness, it was like I was viewing myself laying in the bed from a third person view. This didn't last long though, because I got back to my body pretty quickly. But for a moment there, when I saw myself, I thought that I had died and I was leaving my body but somehow I rationalized myself out of it and thought there's no way I'm dying I'm just on a lot of drugs people always think they're gonna die when when they're like this I don't know how I was able to rationalize myself out of thinking I was dying considering how high I was but I guess I'm just the goat I can just do it so I look over at my phone and I see that Roman is calling me what's up bro are you good bro partially come over to my house though so we came over with Cole and Adam and as they rang the doorbell huh? I was faced with a real dilemma shit how am I gonna let them into my house so I tried to stand up but in instantly just fell on the ground. I had to crawl on the ground over to the stairs and I just fell down them. I was way too high. There was honestly no other way I could get down, but I was also so high. I didn't feel pain from falling down the stairs. So it was all good. I unlocked the door still on the ground with my toes and then just kicked it as hard as I could to let them know they could come in. The three of them stood over my lifeless body and asked, bro, are you okay? How do you feel? Feel. So I reached into my pocket and I pulled out the last brownie. Boys, eat this. You'll know. You'll have a. You'll. Uh, you'll have a. You know a fraction of what I've been through if you eat this. But I need water first. So I get my water and surprisingly, the three of them just split the brownie and ate it like that. I guess high school boys are just that desperate they go feral at the sight of any free weed. I wanted to be transported to the couch, so I got picked up from my limbs and brought over to the most comfy couch. I I've ever felt. We turn on the TV and the first channel that was on was Paw Patrol. It was incomprehensible to me. Then I got some of the most devilish munchies in my life. So I postmated Chipotle. But at this time, the three of these boys were also starting to feel the munchies. Despite eating that small portion of the brownies, it was hitting them enough. So Adam was like, bro, I'm so hungry. And my high ass replied, oh, me too. Don't worry. I'm gonna get Postmates. And I ordered another Chipotle burrito for me and Adam, forgetting that I had ordered the Postmates prior. I guess the group of these three guys picked up on this, so they started to get me to order as much Postmates as they could. Once the burrito started coming in, I'm freaking out, because I don't understand where all of these orders are coming from. I thought I had discovered a real-life infinite food glitch, because four different orders and seven different burritos were delivered to my house but alas it was just my friends sucking me dry of every cent i have so we got all of our burritos brought them in a big pile we held our hands around the burritos and we prayed for this meal we prayed to god and thanked him for this bountiful feast we had and with that there were two extreme lessons i learned this night don't buy edibles from howard and don't trust your friends they will try and get as many burritos out of you is they can. Okay, that's the story. Subscribe. Bye. The fabled dream blunt rotation is the highest echelon of za smoker achievement one can strive for. Not too long ago, there was a day when I almost had my dream blunt rotation become a reality. But because of one individual, that dream would quickly become the nightmare blunt rotation. Roman, Cameron, and Kev, we had just moved in with each other, and this was the housewarming party to celebrate the occasion. We had invited over a hand handful of people we knew, but also there were some unfamiliar faces in the mix as well. The party went smoothly, it was a good time, we had the gas, the drinks, the music, it was bussin' and goated. As the party ended and the people started to leave, there was one man named Ben who just sat there and did not leave our house. We all collectively did not know who huh? this guy was. We don't know who he came with, we don't know how he ended up here, but he was sitting in our living room, unmoving. We didn't want to tell him to get out of our house either because 
because the four of us are all beta males. So we were like, he can stay here for a little while, I guess. But then this guy starts to turn on our PS4 without asking anyone and just creates an entirely new account for him on our system called Ben. I don't know if I would describe this as a power move, pure ignorance, or just being a weirdo, but I could not believe what I was witnessing. So I just decided I need to go outside and smoke weed. Dang, Let's do yeah. it. That sounds like a good idea. So we got the after party blunt rotation outside with Ben and we start passing this around. Once the blunt gets over to Ben, he commits a real atrocity and not just double, but triple dips the blunt before passing it over to me. This is where Ben became a real enemy to me. But the rest of the roommates were still cutting him slack as just being some kid that probably wasn't self-aware. Boy, that was good. I'm gonna go step inside now. I wanna kill him. Nah, man, you're just hungry. Let's door dash some food. So we ordered a load of Mr. Beast burgers for the meme. And as we walked inside, Ben had created an entire new Skyrim save and was watching that cutscene with the horse in the carriage. So uh, you're playing Skyrim? Yep, this was the end of the line for Ben. In this moment, we knew this guy was probably gonna be staying in our house for a lot longer than we wanted and we were all done with him. Come with me, boys. Everyone follows me into my room and I tell them, what? the fuck is this guy doing bro he's gotta go bro he's gonna be here for hours if we don't do anything i'll fuck him up bro i'll punch his teeth out why would we do that before just telling him to leave the house dude he's so brain dead why would he even do this shit, bro true uh, okay so what's the best way to get him out of here without being assholes i don't want to just tell him straight up what if we tell him the police are coming so he runs away why would the police be coming that makes no sense true, true. we could make him really uncomfortable so that he leaves i like that idea what if we make this worse for him than it is for us that way he'll just want to leave then roman looks at his phone and notices through our scheming the beast burgers had been delivered a few minutes ago the four of us walk out to see ben had already brought our mr beast burgers inside not just that but he had eaten a burger despite us not ordering him food not just that but it was my chandler burger he was eating so we just shut the door and go back into my room. There's no time for Beast Burger. We need to get this guy gone now. So the four of us devise a devious scheme to remove Benjamin. This wasn't about us wanting to be polite and indirectly getting the message of, um, excuse me, what the actual fuck are you doing in my house? This was about how we can make this guy pay for the crimes that he has committed. So the four of us get our guns and load them up. We go over to the air conditioning and turn it to the coldest possible option. Once the house was freezing we all point our guns at him and shoot him they were water guns by the way and since the house was cold the water was very chilly why are you doing this you ate my chandler burger bro you gotta go home so ben runs out of our house to never be seen again but the creepy part is the next morning we texted the people we knew at the party to find out who brought him we wanted to know who knew ben the thing was nobody knew who ben was I guess Ben was just a random dude who saw a party and decided to walk into it, eat a Chandler burger, and play Skyrim, which honestly, with that story, I kind of respect. Thank you all for 2,000 entire subscribers. All right, that's the story. Subscribe. Bye. You know the drill. I get dangerously high by myself. Track everything I do on my notes app and tell the story of the actual brain rotting activities I get up to. But this time, there's a little twist. Before I got high, I texted my boys group chat to ruin me tonight. They could call me, text me, or just send whatever heinous dung they can at any time throughout the night that would mess with me or just make a funny moment so here's what happened after eating my special gummies the first thing i wrote down in my notes was watermelon with no melon i guess i found this video so impressive i just had to share it anyways let me set a scene for you as the gummies came into effect the first thought i had to myself was i want my big oreos so i walk myself downstairs into my dimly lit kitchen fill my favorite coffee mug with warm milk and start solemnly munching on these porcelain big Oreos, one intimate bite at a time. As it turns out, I 
only had three Oreos in my bag, which left me with a real problem. I got no more Oreos, but so much milk. Without thinking, I trotted up from my seat, walked over to my little tree, and poured my milk into the soil as if it was water. It took me a minute to mentally process that I had given a tree milk until it finally hit me. Wait, no. Trees can't have milk. That's my favorite tree. What have I done? In tears, I frantically search on Google. What happens if a tree drinks milk? After a long search, I learned that milk is actually good for plants. Not just milk is good, but spoiled milk is too. It's actually a good way of making bad milk useful. So that was kind of interesting. Now I'm sitting here thinking about milk. I can't fully explain the thought process behind this moment, but I brought my ass over to YouTube and searched top 10 milk and just watched this. Why is it so loud? Why would this be the intro to top 10 milk? Anyways, the first milk was Safeway, which isn't even milk. It's a grocery store, but I used to work there. So I commented so helpful. Plus I love Safeway. This comment was a little premature though, because after giving such praise 10 seconds into the video, I decided to skip to the end to see what is the world's greatest milk. This was a terrible mistake that turned all my praise into pure unadulterated rage. They said the best milk is Borden. Are you joking? You have to be smoking crack to genuinely believe Borden is the best milk there is. So rationally, I replied to my original comment with a nasty and hateful reply. As I hit send on the comment, my messages start getting spammed with a constant influx of this deranged dog image coming in from five separate people. There had been an organized attack on my iPhone messages and the dinging wouldn't stop until I got a phone call from someone with no no caller ID. I pick up the phone. Um, hello? And this is exactly what I heard back. Um, is this Borden? Do I need to repent? Do I need to repent for the sins that I spoke on your milk, Borden? And before there was a reply, my phone crashed from the constant dog images that were still going through that whole time. Holy shit, I made a terrible mistake. But then, as if God's light came shining down at me in my darkest time, as I turned my phone back on, the image of the dog had changed. He was so happy now, grinning ear to ear. It was a beautiful sight. Seeing him smile back at me gave me such a sigh of relief. So I felt I'd treat myself to a little Chipotle queso. I ordered from Postmates and the driver's name was Quentin. And I promise you, this is a detail that comes back. As I'm waiting for my Postmates, I go back on YouTube to see something that truly pissed me off. The video was called Strongest Energy Drink comparison, which I thought sounded pretty cool. I was interested in what the world's strongest energy drink was. I click on the video and every single energy drink has 320 milligrams of caffeine. Like it does not stop. The drinks just keep going and they never change. I keep thinking to myself, oh, the next one's gotta be stronger. It's not gonna be 320 milligrams of caffeine and it never is. I was blown away by the asinine shit this video was so much so that I left a hate comment and then I got a neighbor neighborhood watch alert from the ring app that there was a shooting nearby this was one of the best things that had happened to me this night because it gave me a great idea if you didn't know the ring app has a feature where you can create a post that gets sent out to every single person that has the app in a multiple mile wide radius i had never done this before but just the thought to have that much power sending a direct message to so many people at once seemed a little too good to be true but i wanted to figure out if i could do it if it it was possible. First, I would have to figure out what the post was going to be. I thought back to everything that had happened to me this night. That dog with the massive grin. The Postmates driver named Quinton. Everything came together as I uploaded the dog image and gave it the title Dog Acquired and made my masterpiece. Dog alert, we found Quinton. Thank you everyone that helped look for Quinton, but you can finally stop because the search is over. Here he is happy as ever now that he's home and safe. He must have gone on quite the adventure. I thought this post seemed pretty believable and so did the people working for Ring since my post made it through the auto moderation and was sent out to the public. This was a massive success. Not gonna lie, I felt pretty awesome after pulling off the Quentin scheme so I went upstairs and ate more of my gummies. This would ultimately feed into a dark cycle though because once I started playing Fortnite, in between every game, I would forget 
forget that I had eaten a gummy and I would go for more. I don't know how many of these I ended up having, but I had enough that I tragically forgot the Chipotle queso waiting for me at the door that the real Quentin had delivered for me so graciously. I was just like Drake off these gummies because after I ate all of them, I was out like a light. And that's the end of the story. Subscribe. Bye. Moon Rocks, aka THC Megazord, huh? is allegedly the most dangerous and powerful devil's lettuce crafting ingredient humans can possibly create with our current technology. Moon Rocks are the frontier of all weed advancements and that if smoked will change the way you view weed for the rest of your life. At least that's how some people were hyping these things up to me before I tried them. So when I first heard about this, naturally the first thing I thought was the fuck is a moon rock? And you'd think I would have found out after having smoked them and I'm leading into an explanation, but to be honest, I still don't know. I mean, it's a little nugget, it looks like a rock, and it's really strong. That's all I know. Anyways, here's the story of the first time I smoked a moon rock. I was with my boys as per usual when the idea of moon rocks came up. None of us had actually ever done them before, so it would be all of our first times. But since it was our first times, we didn't have any. But for the most part, we're all big kids now, so a few of us drove down to the dispensary to pick some up. We walk in, ask the employees for moon rocks, and they didn't even know what we were talking about. How do you work at a dispensary and not know what the weed is? We left empty-handed and decide to take some Google searches to find out how to get these. After Google searching, can you get moon rocks at dispensary? We found out that they're actually extremely rare. Not just that, but they're actually illegal! Oh wait, that's talking about the shits from space. Never mind. We loaded up weed maps and found a dispensary that has them. Drove over there, and yeah, 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 we get home, time to get high, baby, let's go. The price for these things were really steep. It was like $80 a pop, but also the price only added to the group's collective curiosity. So me, Roman, Roderick, and Adam all gathered around this magic rock marveling at its greatness. Damn, bro, it's beautiful. You really think this tiny rock can really be all that? Uh, I don't know, bro. I hear it's illegal. You can't have rocks from space base like that, so it's got to be strong. Roderick and Adam were already high going into this, so please pray for their souls. Cameron was also there, but as per usual, he didn't smoke, although he played the most important role in all of this, and that was giving me the information of what happened this night, because if not for him, I would have not remembered anything that happened to me to make this video. So we loaded up the thing, smoked the moon rocks, and almost instantly, you can feel that these things are strong. Off rip, each of us were feeling it quite adequately and splendiferously so. We did the usual goofing around and whatnot as you do when you're high. But all in all, the group was a little disappointed at this point. Yeah, we had a good high, but it wasn't quite the next level experience we were wanting. Considering the hype, we had expectations that this would change our lives and provide lifelong financial freedom or something like that. But little did we know, moon rocks actually have a secret ability that doesn't activate until 15 minutes after being smoked. The high of the moon rocks just kept getting higher and higher for us. After some time, we'd all think, damn, all right, this is actually getting somewhere. And then it would just keep going and going and going. The moon rocks had no plateau. And I guess that's the appeal of them. That's probably why they're called moon rocks, yeah? But anyways, after letting the moon rocks cook, we finally got it. Roderick and Adam being high beforehand definitely made them more zooted than anyone else. Because Roderick became completely non-verbal and just lied on the floor, being completely still, while Adam was feeling the texture of the walls going, yo, it feels so real, it feels so good. These two were like the hollows from Dark Souls, dead spirits roaming shallow levels of the astral world, relentless and tormented, clinging on to the last remaining bits of their lives. Me and Roman, we were just really high. Now, what I'm about to say will probably be really controversial and could even possibly ruin my career. But in this heightened state, Roman did the impossible and convinced me that the Ohio meme was actually funny. You know how something that becomes unfunny gets life again by becoming ironic? Well, through that irony, I came full circle to the conclusion that Ohio is funny. He kept pointing and saying, Ohio weed. And Ohio I hated that at weed. first. I thought it Ohio sucked. Weed. I did not Ohio think it was a funny weed. joke at Ohio all. But by the time he got to his 20th Ohio, Ohio weed, 
He eventually broke me. And then he stood over my body as I fell on the ground and said, I control you now, you're mine. Then proceeded to point at things and do the Ohio meme. In hindsight, I kind of don't think he's remotely funny to me at all, but there's something impressive about the fact that he could bring a day's worth of longevity back to this joke. As for me, I felt like my body was made of the sticky part of Velcro and everything else was whatever you call the other end of Velcro. I jumped on this bed and got comfortable completely stuck to it and couldn't get off. But I had a TV and an Xbox at my disposal. And from there, those two simple items brought me something I could only compare to an enlightening and spiritual experience. I queued up some classic Fortnite, went to the creative maps, and attempted to beat Fortnite only up. This collectively brought everyone together to watch me fall off of the first three boxes over and over. But every time I would get one more jump on my run, it was unreal. Everyone would pop off. The way they reacted to my gameplay gave me an evil little idea to do some trolling. Naturally, the group conglomerate gets munchies and all charge towards the kitchen, except for me and Cameron. I had to use all of my willpower to not follow them because I had hella munchies as well. But I turned to Cameron and whispered, Bro, open YouTube for me. I want to see somebody beat this. So we brought up a video as the boys came back. And as they saw these beautiful and excellent jumps being performed before their very eyes, the boys couldn't help but weep. They watched in awe as they thought I was truly beating this whole thing and I gained loads of respect. You can imagine that next, we all just started watching YouTube and go zombie mode. So all in all, moon rocks are good and really strong and make you go hollow. So if that's what you really want, I recommend. Anyways, that's the video. Subscribe. Bye. This was probably the least intelligent moment of my entire life. Unintentionally getting high for three consecutive days. This happened back when I lived with roommates. I had one roommate that would always buy those storage jars to put his food into. Unknowing to me, he had a jar of very special gummy bears that would sit on the kitchen counter in full view from anywhere in the living room. These special gummy bears, due to the jars he would put them in, were completely unmarked and proceeded to make me become an unknowing victim to their powers for the next three days. So I woke up at 5 a.m. like the champion beast trailblazer I am. I got my pre-workout and went out to drink it in the living room. This was when I first laid eyes on the gummy bear jar. I thought one little bear wouldn't hurt, so I eat it, drink the pre-workout, and drive to the gym. A little bit into my workout, I'm starting to feel sloshed. Damn, the pre-workout really hitting today. Sheesh, I feel like Charizard. But then it starts to get worse. I'm doing these curls like one, two, four two, three, six. I just can't count correctly. My mind is all scattered. I started to realize something was really off when I got on the treadmill and ran three miles without feeling a shred of fatigue. I was just in a mental trance the entire time I ran. I go into the locker room and while I sit here finally with a moment to myself, I realize I probably should not drive myself home. I had to wake up the boy Roman to pick me up and also bring someone else to take my car back because I felt crazy. He pulls up with Cameron and the operation is followed through. Are you all right, man? Yeah, I just feel different, but not bad. We get home and I've got a Zoom class to attend in about an hour. As I'm walking to my room, I pass the gummy bears and eat another one. While I wait for my class, I remember just sitting in my chair, staring at my PC, doing nothing like a zombie. I was trying to mentally will myself into being functional for this class, but since I ate the other gummy bear as I entered my room, it just got worse. I sat in this class just staring at myself in this little Zoom camera camera window. The teacher even called on me at one point, but I just kept staring. I didn't say a word. It may have been from me being so high I couldn't process what was happening, but there was not a word spoken from me. I woke up this day pretty tired from the high of yesterday, but I still hadn't put two and two together and realized the bears were edibles. I had an in-person class today to attend, so I left for that pretty early and again, ate a gummy on my way out. The gummy hit as I was walking to class and I was like, God damn it, not again, what's happening to me? I keep walking to class because God picks his hardest fights for his strongest soldiers until I realize I have no idea where I'm at. 
that. A few wrong turns had been made without me realizing it, and now I gotta figure out how to get back. I probably walk around these neighborhoods for like 30 minutes just trying to find my way back on track to get to class. But then I remember, oh yeah, I got a phone, I can use this. So I maps my way back to campus, but I had not made the calculations required to know by the time I got there, the class would be over. I walk into the lecture room that would be my class, and there's a whole different teacher in class going on that I attend thinking, nah, this, this has got to be the same class. I bet this is just a substitute. The class ends, and I'm still oblivious to the fact that that was not the lecture I was meant to be in. An email pops up on my phone about my absence, and I remember replying to the email just saying, not true, and then walking all the way home. I had homework to do, but as I sat down to do it, I was like, yo, the teacher did not teach us this today. So I just played Elden Ring for the next eight hours of the day. All this weed I had been consuming kind of messed up my sleep schedule because I woke up this day a good amount later than usual. So when I walked into the living room, my roommates were all awake and out there. I was like, guys, that thing keeps happening to me. I think I gotta go to the doctors today. Something's just not right with my body or something. I reach in and eat another gummy while I'm out here, but this time in full view of all my roommates. Roman's like, bro, you're really gonna eat an edible this early in the day? And just like that, all of the stars aligned in my head. I had been drugging myself on these gummy bears unintentionally for the past three days. So you're telling me that those are edibles. I've been eating those every single day recently. Then everyone just erupts to clown on me. These dudes couldn't act right. They're like, oh my fucking God, this dude's a dumbass. So I run into my room in tears and listen to Heartless by Kanye West. I hate my friends. All right, that's the story. You know the drill, bye. When it comes to high school, we all have shit memories. Nobody's decision-making will be depthful when they don't have consciousness. Even when it was good, Good, it was never all that good. Today, I'm unfortunately here to recall upon a time that has fallen down in infamy. It was a certified bad time. Back in 11th grade, we needed to up the ante and raise the stakes on a daily basis, merely to keep entertained and probably alive with our hormone brains. So we concocted this half scheme idea to smoke gold. And what I meant by that was to roll a golden joint, surely an absolute premium experience to be had. We wanted that man in the moon weed to get us out of this motherfucking world and to place into our wraps made of gold. But that wasn't enough. We had the brilliant idea of suggesting a boy's feast this night, featuring a steak, a beautiful steak as the main dish. We fancied ourselves sophisticated philosophers and men of taste. The philosophers in question being me, Roman, Roderick, and Adam. Our combined brain power told us we needed to act fast, or else Adam's plug may take a nap. So Adam texted him at lunch real quick to secure a dub before Mans hit his afternoon weed coma. After school, we hopped in the whip and skirted off. Questing with the boys was never any lightweight situation, you understand. A Socratic philosophical debate carried out inside revolving around how much coinage was required for the night's festivities. If we pooled our money, we had $47, which was probably enough to buy the steak and the weed that we wanted. We pulled up to Safeway and parked the whip to commence the shopping. This was my first time buying meat to cook. I didn't know what to look for and neither did anyone else. We bought the steak, got in and got the fuck out of there like that. Adam's plug lived right up the hill, so we zoomed up the hill right after and filled into his basement like weed gnomes. When we got the za, we tell him about our quest and ask him if he knows how or where we could find golden wraps. He goes, hold on, as he pulls out a golden cone and a small piece of gold paper. You can either have a pre-roll for 20 or the filter for free, but you can't have both. This is what I meant when I said high school was shite. This moment right here should have been it all. Anyways, the boys mentally connect for a moment and confirmed that we're all like, fuck this guy. So we grab the filter and head out. Before we leave, he gives us three shops that wouldn't card, according to him. With two of the three ingredients scored, everybody hopped back in Adam's car and set course for the first shop. We for real felt like American navies in this moment. 
brave seamen who ventured into unknown waters for booty. As we pulled into the parking lot, Adam said he wanted to go in first. So we blessed his ass with ancient prayers before exiting the vehicle. He comes back empty handed and looking a tad unnerved. He explains that he went in to find a really chill young looking guy behind the counter. But as he started to browse around, he noticed that there was a bit of a switch up. An old guy sat crossing his arms and glaring at Adam from where the other guy was. This did not vibe with Adam very well, so he bolted out the door before he let anything else happen. Exhibit 19 as to why high school sucks. The shit you have to risk your literal life and limb over was never worth it. Looking back, this was not worth the amount of trouble we could have gotten into. From here on out, we decided to call the places to ask if they had any specialty wraps, but the second and third shops that the plug had given us were a no-go. So we decided to Google 24 karat gold weed wrapping paper for sale near me. This turned up some interesting results, and after some more Googling, we narrowed it down to one shop that might have had. At this point, we're impatient and morally sabotaged after escaping a nearly fatal encounter with the last. As we're pulling into this decrepit looking empty strip mall, we consult the lexicon and find a ritual of protection for our boy Roderick. We gotta buff him with dark moon blade before sending our man out into the fray of dark root garden, bro. This motherfucker Roman starts chanting inaudibly. We wrap up our blessings and Roderick steps out ready to face our collective demons adults in authority positions in possession of shit that we want. We wait five minutes, then like eight, and then about 10 minutes go by and there's still no sign of him. Finally, he comes out and it looks good. He's got that little grin we all knew meant good things. Roderick went sexy beast mode and not only found the wraps, but convinced this guy that he was 21 enough to buy them. So we had the wraps, we had the za, we had the steak, and we had our magical precious filter all that was needed now was to assemble the stones like thanos and rip fat tokes of this golden excellence adam's parents still hadn't gotten home yet so we zoomed over there to prepare the feast adam cracks out the pan while roman and roderick take over the cooking preparations everyone crowds around the cooking skillet watching the steak come up as Adam tries to roll the joint. The problem was that we had not expected the golden wrapping paper to be as thin and slippery as it was. Adam's fingers couldn't really get a good tuck going and fold the paper over. Micro weed nuggets start falling out and I foresee what is about to happen before it does. This moment is God sent. I prophesized the fall of the joint. As we're all there admiring this magnificent cut of beef sizzling on the burner, Adam's hands dip down low, causing every single last crumb of weed to roll out the tip into the steak. Nobody says anything. Then without saying a word or anything out loud, we all lean forward and start trying to inhale the sizzling weed crumbs off the frying pan. But of course, it doesn't work, so we all cry and piss ourselves for the rest of the night. And that's why high school is ass. I feel like everyone's first time eating edibles involves disappointment, quickly followed by a wave of high hitting like the GTA 5 train. It's just unstoppable. Leaving yourself floating at the mercy of the sea of THC, just hoping you didn't get too high. It's the classic these edibles ain't shit dilemma. And in my case, my first edible really were shit because the mixture of THC and these brownies I got were just not evenly spread throughout. I got my first edibles from this one kid I went to school with. I didn't really know the guy, but I knew Roman and he knew the guy, so I trusted the guy. He had baked his own edible brownies he was selling at school, so I decided to jump on the opportunity and I bought three of them for Cole, Roman, and me. We got through our day of school with the weekend ahead of us, so we decided to all assess 
assemble at Roman's place that night and eat the brownies. And if anything bad were to happen, we had Saturday and Sunday to recover from this. So it's around 6 p.m. and the three of us are all bunkered down in Roman's bedroom. We had prepared for the munchies, so we had boxes of Oreos, bags of Doritos, and three Happy Meals for the three of us. We got our brownies and we prepared to enter the high. Wherever this brownie takes us, we don't know. We could very well come out of this new men. Let us surrender to the high in complete acceptance. There's no fighting what's to come. So after the epic speech, we eat our brownies and we start playing Minecraft. We make a new world with the hopes that we'll make some weird stuff we can look back on when we're sober, but I won't lie, we don't end up playing the game for very long. Just about every four or five minutes, we're all like, feel anything yet? No, nah. damn, I hope we didn't get scammed. After 30 minutes or so past, Cole just falls over and starts laughing. These brownies hit him hard, almost as hard as the carbon monoxide poisoning that will be taking out Chains for Real on the 16th of October, 2023 at 4.08 AM. The two of us turn around and this dude is already shredding into the Happy Meal with no remorse. Damn, that shit must have really hit. Seeing Cole act a fool had some kind of chain reaction on me because I started to feel these brownies almost right away and I started tearing into my Happy Meal with no remorse. We get our toys out and at the time, a McDonald's had frozen two toys. So I got this man that looks like he's made out of literal shit and Cole got the same guy. These toys were also projectiles. So we're just shooting each other with the shit man and losing it. This whole time, Roman is just sitting here so Sober is a doorknob. I mentioned how the THC wasn't spread evenly throughout the brownies. What ended up happening with that was Roman didn't get high at all, while Cole and I got a super concentrated part of the batch. So we're having a good time while Roman just has to assume the parental figure position for the night. It's unfortunate, but Roman never experiences fortune, so it is what it is. The two of us completely ignore Minecraft to destroy every crumb of food we have. I start getting thirsty, so I leave the room and I start walking to the kitchen. I see Roman's mom coming in my direction, so I quickly just make a turn to go into the bathroom to avoid her. When I walk into the bathroom, it feels so still. It's a little cold and there's not a sound. I stare at myself in the mirror for like 10 minutes without breaking eye contact, and I just think to myself, damn, I'm really just a guy on drugs right now. My thoughts get broken by a loud thought thump from outside the room. So I go out and I go back to the bedroom and I just see all the Happy Meal boxes crushed flat on the ground. Cole is just walking around talking about Don Juan, some Spanish dude that seduces women, I guess. I don't really know. I'm like, yo, what was that noise? And I don't even know what Roman said back to me because I just enter a new dimension in this moment. I don't know what it is, but I'm just hit so hard. I tune out the entire external world and get taken somewhere entirely different. I lay on the bed and just focus all my attention on the sound of the Minecraft soundtrack that's still playing on the game we abandoned. Me and the bed just become one being and I'm like this for the rest of the night. I don't even notice it, but Cole and Roman leave the room and apparently they went off on a walk and got chased by a dog or something. I'm not all too sure because I was gone and out for the rest of the night, but that's just what they told me. The next morning, I woke up feeling super tired, but it was also kind of a nice tired. I just felt chill. Roman was fine, but Cole's pants had an entire bottom half of the leg ripped off. I was in such a chill mindset, I didn't even bother to ask but it seemed like those two really went through some shit. Once the night was over and I had successfully done my first edible, I look back on it glad that Roman didn't get to experience it at all because fuck him. <laughs> Here
Here's a big one. You people have wanted this. My first time getting high, as it goes for most people, was a crazy experience. Now, I was at my friend Roderick's house. He's a classic guy. He's in just about every story that I tell at this point. Roderick's house was not like any other house. He lives in luxury, a luxury that a poor, under the poverty line boy like me will flip his shit when he sees. I mean, He's got a piano as you walk into his house. He's got a projector as a TV in his living room. This is the shit you see LA YouTubers live in. He lives in the Incredibles mansion. So Roderick was the weed expert that was going to show me his ways and I was his apprentice. And this wasn't just my first time smoking weed. I should mention it was also my friend Roman's. The three of us were all sleeping over together this night inside Roderick's nice ass house. Roderick was the real host me this night because he said we can't just smoke a wax pen on both of your guys's first time we gotta get our hands on the real stuff what we had to do first was acquire the weed because we didn't have anything at this point so we were going through the process of asking everyone that we knew on snapchat if they knew somebody that sells weed until we finally landed on one guy we pull up to his place and it's not scary at all but this is my first drug deal i'm anxious in my mind what if this dude's got a gun? What if he kills us in cold blood? But then this dude comes out of his house with these big ass goggle glasses. He looked like a real dork. This motherfucker was a certified bozo. We could have given this dude a wedgie for the weed. Once we drove off with the weed, we all just burst out laughing because we were expecting the exact opposite of this guy. We had acquired our first weed. Roman and I were just marveling at its beauty. We felt the weed. We smelt the weed. But most importantly, we wanted to smoke the weed. Before we stopped back at Roderick's, we drove to the gas station and he was like, I'll be back in a minute. This won't take long. He comes back with a bottle of Sprite, a pack of gum, a pencil, and a straw. Yo, what is this all for, bro? You'll see, bro. You will see. So we drive back to Roderick's place, run to his bedroom, and assemble all of our stuff. Roman and I just sit back while Roderick works his magic. He drinks the whole Sprite bottle, takes a gum wrapper, and wraps it over the top. He pokes some holes in the wrapper, and then he stabs the side of the bottle and sticks a straw in. And just like that, we had our own homemade bong made. It was a pretty jank way to smoke weed, and it it didn't work all that effectively, but we had to make do with what we had. We were on limited resources. So we smoked out the Sprite bottle and I don't know what was in this weed, but it affected Roman and I in a way weed has never before since then. In my going for a walk on mushrooms video, I mentioned how the mushrooms made my vision like in Minecraft, how your FOV can increase. In my experience, that's pretty usual for mushrooms, but this was the one and only time Time that I've had this effect solely from weed and it wasn't just me Roman had the same experience with his vision it was so weird I don't know what was in this goddamn weed but it had us looking at things crazy I was so goddamn giggly too that I just couldn't get enough of these guys I laughed at everything it didn't stop Stop. After you smoke a good amount of times, I feel like the giggles eventually just go away. But the first time I had the laughs. Then the fabled munchies kicked in and we had no remorse for the kitchen. We started tearing through everything like savages. There was a fruit bowl in the middle of the kitchen. So I went don't mind if I do and wiggled my little fingers. I picked out an apple and there was a fly on the apple and I don't know why, but this fly scared me. I mean, I just, I don't fuck with bugs. So I threw the apple, I projectile tossed it across the living room and it hit right into a framed painting and shattered the glass. I don't feel good about this even today, but luckily the painting itself wasn't damaged and his parents were not home at the time. It was fucking loud. They would have known what happened so we started to panic but thankfully Roderick is the real homie because he vacuumed up the glass for us lord knows neither of our asses could have functioned a vacuum in our current state and by this time i started fucking up the pop tarts and i just forgot about what happened i wasn't joking when i said we were savages we were on our real ruffian shit roman went back to the room first with his snacks and as i followed behind him i entered the room to see that he was 
unclothed. He was only wearing his undies. He was sitting on Roderick's bed, eating a family bag of chips and watching YouTube videos. I feel like it's almost a universal experience where people smoke weed for the first time and search videos to watch while high on YouTube. And the same videos always just come up too. I know that you have seen this cartoon before. This video had us mesmerized. It was beautiful. We went on a YouTube binge for like over an hour or so, and I couldn't tell you how it happened, but we eventually ended up on Diary of a Wimpy Kid YouTube. We were just enjoying some classics, like Greg Hefley is a sociopath. After we got bored of YouTube, we put on some lo-fi beats, and Roderick had this light projector that put stars all over the walls and we fell into a slumber. I was paranoid the following week or so because I thought his parents would have noticed the painting frame that I broke, but they never really did. Because of me, there's a painting with no glass in his house and to this day, nobody has really noticed it at all. So that was the story of the first time I smoked weed. Okay, bye bye! I haven't gotten high in school very often, and anyone who has gotten high in school would know why. It always sounds like a good idea at first, but in practice, it can be so goddamn scary. Now, this story isn't just about me getting high, but instead, the whole squad was smoking in class. And under those circumstances in mind, you know shit had to have gone down. And it did. So it was the first day back to school from summer break. And it was the morning of that day before the classes had started. As the nature of the first day of school goes, I was pissed off. And so was my boy Roderick, the same guy from the mushroom story. We were pissed we had to be back in this place, but it also was sick to see everyone I didn't see over the summer. So we were greeting everyone in the grade, catching up in the hallways, when none other than the man himself, Kevin, comes through the doors, beelines straight to the two of us and whispers in our ears, Bro, meet me in the handicapped stall real quick. I got something to tell you. Which may I add is an insane way to greet someone on the first day back from summer break, but we followed him into the bathroom to see what was up. As we walked in, Kevin is standing on the toilet like he is about to give a speech to us and says, Guys, None of the three of us want to be here, wouldn't you guys agree? And we nodded our heads in agreement. Then why don't we go somewhere else? And this guy pulls out not just one, but three different wax pens and our mouths are agape. Keep in mind, I rarely smoked at this time. So to see not just one, but three wax pens that this dude had brought into the school was the craziest thing I had ever witnessed. I was like... No way we're smoking right here and right now. And Kevin said, not yet. See, I've been dreading the first day of school for a long time now. So I've thought up a way to make it a little more interesting. I want to play a game. We each carry a pen on us for the entirety of the day. Every time somebody says some dumb shit, you have to take a hit. And if you don't get caught all day, you get to keep the pen. But... If you get caught, you owe me $50. In one moment, I was going about my ordinary day in school, and in the next, I'm choosing which pill I'm gonna take, and you know I took the green pill, and so did Roderick. I won't lie, the speech had us getting hyped in this bathroom stall. If anyone was in the bathroom at the time, I feel like they probably would have gotten the wrong idea. But anyways, we had to plan our day. We all brought out our schedules to see which classes we shared. I shared Spanish with Roderick, math I was with both, English I was alone for, and study hall I had the two of them again. But the bell rang and me and Roderick headed over to Spanish and departed from Kevin. As we walked into the classroom, we agreed we wouldn't sit next to each other, so if one person came down, the other wouldn't come down with them. And it would be easier to stay undercover, so we both sat in the back corners of the class. The class started and the teachers were going over the syllabus when this kid raised his hand and asked, when we get our assignments, do you want our names in English or Spanish? Me and Roderick just stared at each other from across the class after that. We knew what we had to do. 
as soon as the teacher turned around to the whiteboard, we took a hit. But then she turned around and we just had to hold in the smoke until she turned around again. And once I did, I started coughing loud. I couldn't hold it in that long. So I crossed my arms and put my head down and no one thought anything of it, but it was close. The class went on and we got out of that one safe. Although those wax pens, if you've ever smoked them before, hit hard. So even though I only took one hit, I was already feeling it as we walked to math. We got to the class first and as Kevin walked in, he looked so fucked up. I was like, bro, what happened to you? And all he replied with was, it was Liam, bro. And then just took a seat before I could respond. Lord have mercy on his soul. Let me tell you, math was a dreadful class to get through. Not because of the challenge. We didn't even have to smoke once during this period. It was just the munchies, bro. Lunch was the next period and I was fiending for that school lunch. The most entertaining thing that happened to that class was that I sat across from Kevin, staring him straight on, and he just kept nodding out of existence and coming back. This guy was on another planet and it was only 10 in the morning. Once lunch came, I spent like $20 on snacks, but they were all out of the vending machine, which was a process I did not have the patience for. Waiting for the food to come down just felt like an eternity. The squad linked up and I tried to get more information on what happened to Kevin during first period. Can you elaborate on what happened to you earlier, bro? Liam, bro, he like had to introduce himself and he said he likes kids. He didn't realize how bad that sounded, bro, he, but he really said it. And to be honest, me and Roderick, we just decided to take a hit right there after hearing that out of respect for what he had gone through. Once the bell rang, I started stressing because my next class was alone. I lost my supports and I had to face English class like a real stoic man. I sat down. I don't remember exactly what the question was, but I do know that some kid said something that I had to smoke to. So I had to take a hit. Then the guy next to me leans over and looks into my eyes and just nods. I was sitting next to the school stoner Bradley. Bradley saw this and asked, yo can i get one bro so respectfully i handed him the pen and with no remorse for his own life proceeded to blow it straight into the air and of course the teacher noticed and walked over i thought it was all over for me in this moment but he just ended up sending bradley to the office but the thing is that he still had my pen on him when he left this guy 200 iq outplayed me and purposefully got sent to the office so he could take the pen for himself i don't know if that was actually his plan but that's just what it seemed like to me once english ended i walked into study hall and this part was the hardest part of the challenge to overcome. If you've had study hall before, you know how silent the class is. So I'm trying to tell these two how I got my pen stolen, but I'm so high I cannot control how loud I'm being and I just can't communicate what happens. I guess they both deemed that to be smokable, so they both took a hit and as they exhaled, I couldn't help but just laugh at myself and I laughed loudly, which alerted the teacher and got Roderick and Kevin caught. But since I got my pen stolen, I got away from it. I didn't have anything on me. They got sent to the front office and I had to wait out the next hour of this class in an excruciating silence, just paranoid that somebody was gonna come after me. But at the end of the day, nothing happened of it. So I technically won the challenge and got to keep the pen. But since it got stolen, I really just got nothing. But I'm glad I won though, because if I had lost, I would have had to fork over $50 and a new pen. So I dodged a bullet there. So while I didn't get anything, at least I didn't lose.